was in October 1976 and I saw the Sex Pistols. Johnny Rotten, Glenn Matlock, Steve Jones, Paul Cook, full force right in your face, but that was pretty much it for me. As soon as I came home from that gig, I knew I had to start a band of my own. I still look to the, to the greats. I still look to Bob Dylan. I saw Bob Dylan play in the Royal Albert Hall. It was a historic moment for him to be at the Albert Hall. He hadn't been there since the 60s when it, he'd gone electric. It was as punk rock as seeing the Sex Pistols in 1976. I think there's a, an autobiography in Inside the Alarms music that goes right back to the beginning. It's a story a lot of people relate to. They've taken the music into their lives, they've made it work at, on their journeys to their office, they've made it work at the birth of their children, at, at these significant moments in their life. This music has been there as a soundtrack and, and, and when they come to the shows, they're as big a part of the show as the sound of the band and, and we have a very unique relationship that is embodied physically by an event we have called The Gathering, which is in the Alarms hometown in North Wales. We have thousands of Alarm fans come every year, and it's a physical representation of our family. It's where we gather together to celebrate what's gone, but what's to come in, in the future. And, and I think that's something quite unique in, in rock and roll. And it was then that I realised that this music that I've been part of the creation of was, was a very real element in people's lives and was part of their emotional weaponry that help them deal with their journey in life. Music has seen me through some very tight situations in life. Uh, uh, I can literally remember being in, in a hospital bed, uh, having a treatment called a leukapheresis. I was in the initial throes of a leukemia diagnosis. I was pretty much at death's door almost. It, it was Life was definitely hanging in the balance. And I was having a procedure to bring me back from the edge. And uh, my wife had brought my iPod in. I was listening to music and fading in and out of the treatment. And, uh, and there was a song called... Um, in a big country by the Scottish band Big Country came on and uh, it had two lines in it, stay alive and uh, they just kept calling to me and it, it, it's like someone coming into the, the dressing room in a sports situation or on the battlefield and giving you a call to arms and preparing you for what is to come and inspiring you and lifting you and, 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 and you know there's an adrenaline that runs through you when you hear something like that. Uh, Mike Peters, you're a piece of work yourself. <laughs> In 1995 when I was diagnosed with lymphoma um, it, it felt like it was the dark ages of cancer then. I didn't know anything about it. I wanted to run away. I didn't think, I th thought that was something that happened to other people that didn't happen to someone my age who was in a rock and roll band. That was something that happened in another part of life and not, not my life. But when it came, it was frightening. And, uh, and I was in the midst of a tour and, and I didn't want the, the music to stop, but to, to have this bone marrow transplant. It felt like that was opening the door to the end of the world, not a new beginning like making a new record does. A very big instinct said to me, don't cancel the tour. And, uh, and I decided to, to put it on hold till I was ready to deal with the disease, not when it was calling to me, trying to take me. I said, no, you stay there till I'm ready. And uh, I went on the tour and played my music and saw things in my music I had, didn't even know was there. I couldn't get any insurance to travel because I was uh, going through chemotherapy. And with my wife, Jules, we found a way to get to America and, and be able to play. And it was through that process that we were introduced to James Chippendale. We started chatting via email. Um, my first question to Mike was, have you gotten a second opinion? And Mike said, no, I just went to my little cancer center in Wales. And I said, that's not good enough. You know, you need to get second and third opinions to know that you're absolutely going down the right path. So things progressed from there. A huge friendship started. James was really gracious to me. He was someone I didn't know, but he, he said to me, now you're part of this cancer community. You're the part of the family. We started do, talking about doing a charity event with my contacts in the music business, his musician friends, and we couldn't really find a charity that resonated with what was important to us. You know, I was very fortunate that I found a donor at the, the 11th hour um, from a little village outside of Berlin, Germany, but there's hundreds of thousands of people around the world that don't have that. 
So we looked for an organization that we could support and we really couldn't find one. So, you know, Mike and I being very entrepreneurial and, and, and slightly insane as well, we said, let's start our own. Now the rest is history. It's seven years later. We've been part of 1,800 events on seven continents. Since then, we've got 75,000 new donors added to the registry, 1,000 matches. We support two cancer centers around the world, one in Nepal, one in uh, Tanzania, where we built the first ever children's cancer center. And um, the support's been unbelievable. When I wrote the song Strength in, in 1985, um, I wrote the lines, who will be the lifeblood coursing through my veins. And that was more of a, um, a poetic line, really. I didn't realize it would become something that was a reality. And, and in fact, that's what I needed to find. I needed somebody to give me their blood to survive. And um, I'd made these green t-shirts my friends and family were for it to wear when they visited me in hospital or for the fans to wear and they had the words love, hope and strength written on the shirt and James said this couldn't be more perfect. So I said that's the name of the charity and, and it was just one of those moments where we knew that we were, we were on the right track. When Mike and I started the charity we said we want everything to be unique. You know there's going to be no black tie, cordon bleu, chicken fundraisers. You know, we're going to do rock concerts on top of mountains, so we've taken musicians to the top of Mount Everest, top of Kilimanjaro. The thing that sets us apart from most other charities is the, the thread of music running through every single event that we do. We would make sure that everybody on the planet has access to quality cancer care and a bone marrow donor. That's it. We don't know more, no less. The cures are out there. The treatments are out there. It's just giving people access to these treatments. Everybody in the world would have a fighting chance against cancer. Love, Hope, Strength has brought so many people together who would never have met. Uh, it's turned rock concerts that I've played all my life uh, into life-saving events. It's a growing family type of organization, and it's something I could, I'm really, really proud of. So what Mike and I have brought to Celebrity Auction Doctors today is this amazing Epiphone guitar by one of our great sponsors, Gibson. It's autographed by some of the most legendary uh, 80s and 90s rockers out there. We've got Slim Jim Phantom, we've got Billy Duffy from The Colt, we've got Miles Zuniga from Fastball, we've got James Stevenson, who's from Gene Loves Jezebel. Um, and it's going to be autographed by every single artist that is in the upcoming uh, documentary that's going to be released um, at the end of this year. So. This guitar is going to travel around the world with us. Um, it's going to be autographed and played by most of these musicians. If you don't bid on it, I'm going to because I really, I really like it. Give me love, give me love, hope and strength, give me love, hope and strength to carry on through the whitewash corridors and the Let's desert set dreams to the end of night And the click, 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 click of the killing machines Till you put your hand again in mine Give me love, give me love, hope and strength Give me love, hope and strength to carry Shorts, with your guiding light, with your hands in mind.